Is it a little bit? Yeah. Okay. That's how it looks like. So we will start our discussion with uh, you know overview of the SPX. SPX is like uh, not SPX. I was supposed to do the TSX. TSX. So we'll start our discussion with the TSX index, uh, just an overview of the Canadian market, how is it doing? And then we will move on to a few of the stocks that are traded in the US and Canadian market to see, to analyze them from the technical perspective. So the TSX index, as we have been discussing previously, like based on this uh, FIB ratios, TSX ultimate target seems to be at 16,500 level that we have been discussing previously and uh, that, that's uh, we are basing this expectation based on the idiot wave pattern and currently we are like in the wave 5 region and this wave 5 seems to be heading towards its ultimate target of 16,500. We may see like ups and downs during the course like it goes up towards its target but uh, the overall view seems to be positive with uh, economy you know we can we, we see a positive signs uh, with regards to the coronavirus updates and although they have been like few spikes in the, in the last few, few of the days in the last week, but uh, in the long run, we are expecting this economy to recover. And uh, by July and most of the results of the financial uh, results of most of the companies that will be announced. We are expecting few in this week as well, like Air Canada on 31st of July, they are announcing on call before they announce the results and shop is also going to announce the result this week. I think that's on 29th. If I'm not wrong, yeah, 39. So with the over uh, the overview it seems to be positive for the TSX index, and currently we are standing at 15,900 points. There was a correction in the last three days, so which uh, because of which the market lost almost like 300 points, 300 to 300 point, uh, 350 points. But previously the market was like green, but sort of in a consolidation phase. And currently we are back to 15,900. It was like last week the market crossed 16,000 level and that was a positive sign and because of which market, you know, uh, we, we, we saw like four green days, almost a full week of uh, uptrend. And now we have a, a sort of correction phase and the coming week, depending on how, the, how we see the results of the companies, like the big companies which are normally driving the market like shop and others, and if we expect a positive outcome, uh, like we are though expecting a positive outcome from them. So if that happens, the market will may continue its uptrend and the ultimate target will be around 16,500. But at this point of time, we should be like very keen and we should be watchful of the index, how the index is moving. Because as I said, like this is the mostly the week for the announcement of the results. If there is any bad news or anything, the index may take a hit, and it is directly correlated to our Nasdaq. Let's have a look at the index, how it's behaving these days. So NDX has been traveling in in a channel for a very very long time, and it is like moving in the same trend as I, we have been discussing it for a couple of weeks. And this in the last in the last session, it has like uh, broken this channel and has plunged down to 10,483 level. It may be a false breakout because it, it, the last time when it came out of this channel was like very late in March and it stood there for like three, three, just for three days and then back to the channel. So, so far it has been moving in the same channel and we're expecting like it for this uh, to again go back in the same channel and continue its journey towards its 80% retracement level of uh, 100 uh, of 11,510. Not 80%. I think it's 161% retracement level of uh, 161% retracement level at 11,500. So that ultimately uh, it will shoot up, and the same impact we will see on our TSX index as well. So we should be very watchful to the index how it is moving because the Nasdaq has been very volatile in the last three four days, like in three. In four days, it has lost like from 11,000 to 10,400, almost 600 points that they lost. So that's all was also due to the impact on you know the results of the companies that have been announced, and it has given 
you know, a negative impact because most of the time the stocks were like overpriced. Like if we talk about Netflix, then Netflix seems to be overpriced. The PE ratio was not, uh, you know, depicting the same price levels as as a level that, uh, on which that Netflix was being traded. It was seemed to be like overpriced. And few of the others as well, Tesla also, you know, we saw a dip in the Tesla from 1700 uh, back to 1400 and then now it's back to again 15, 16, 15, 1600 levels. So that was one of the reasons because that was a week for the results and the coming week for the Canadian market is also uh, expected to be the same. That's why I think it's very important to keep an eye on the index before we plan our trades. And as an overview of the market in the gold market, in the mine, uh, mining industry, the gold is like making all times higher. It's like, uh, if I'm not wrong, it was like 1870 level at last time I saw this let's go to investing .com. we can have a better view of how this gold market is doing these days the gold market was like almost high yeah 1899 so it is like all times high level of um, reaching 1900 level if it sustains this level it will be good for all the mining stocks but if it doesn't so we may see a dip in the market but currently it is like seems to be at a very very high level and we can see all this uh, movement being reflected in our mining industry as well and crude is also like 41 seems it is like sustaining at the level of 40 plus and if it takes a dip it might you know punch back to 34 or 33 level but still like it, it seems like it has been sustained a level it has been sustaining a level of 40 plus so keep an eye on the commodity market Commodity market, gold, those who are do, uh, dealing in the gold stocks, in, in the mining stocks, that will be very helpful. I don't know why this commodity page is not opening. Yeah, crude oil, natural gas, gold, 1899, a 10% increase, we're also up, and crude, crude, crude oil is also 41.34. If we just have a quick uh, overview of the crude, because like we have been dealing with some of the energy stocks lately. Mm. You can use both investing.com as well and trading view as well. The watch list normally is good in trading view, but uh, and also it allows to save your charts. Investing.com also allows to save, but the watch list normally is not very interactive here. So, let's see time frame to one day and see how it behaved previously. Yeah, seems like it has been like sustaining this level for like a couple of days from 41 here it seems to be in consolidation phase after it moved from 37 and it made a low of 34 also yeah from 34 back to the 40s and take us took a small dip and then again back to the 40s level so 40 plus level is like seem it has already been sustained so keep an eye on the crude market gold market and how the index is moving in uh, our tsx index is moving with respect to the ndx NASDAQ index and then we can plan our trade accordingly but the gold is like you know these days seems to be at a very very high levels so we will continue back to our stocks that normally we trade in our group so I will hand over to you guys to let me know what the stocks that we want to discuss upon and then one by one we can take some stocks to discuss yes which stocks you want us to start with Thanks guys. Otherwise, come and we'll pick us off. Can we try uh, Barrick Gold? 
Barrick gold, yes. Let's have a look at the barrick gold. Are you currently dealing with this barrick gold? Yes, I am planning. Barrick gold deposit. Barrick gold corporation. This may be it. Okay. So ABX. and see where it is heading to seems like it is currently in the uptrend in the uptrend channel with the RSI being positive and RSI is also in the upward direction okay and if we draw the replacement level so currently it's like heading towards its next target or a like hundred percent retracement before like it uh, made a spike at this level of forty point two six. So, but it didn't give a closing at that level. If we draw the resistance here, it will face a resistance at thirty nine point six four because it touched like one almost like it gave a closing of two times, three four times. It tested this level, but wasn't able to cross it. And also this uh, FIB ratio is almost giving us the same value of 40.26 based on this spike that uh, it hit it previously in Apple. So ultimate target, we what we see is like 39 for this stock and currently it is at 38. So upside seems to be like limited towards like just $1, I would say, that, yeah, $1.5. It that, That's upside for this stock. So be informed the technical perspective uh, the upside is limited to 1.5 dollar and if it breaks this resistance level then we can see like a huge spike in this making a new highs and downside mm -hmm. is the the downside of this stock seems to be at a level of 35 so currently the downside is like three dollars versus the upside let me draw just, okay, there is already a support level here drawn by FIB ratios, 35. The downside is $3 versus the upside is 1.5. So uh, I would say like if we wait for this stock to break out, to give a breakout above this resistance line, and then we can make an, make an entry. Or otherwise, like if you do an entry at this point and it hits this level of resistance and falls back, then it can, you know, move further down towards its level of 35. So I think it would be better to wait if it gives an actual breakout for this um, at, the, at the level of 39.6 and then continues upward journey. Overall, but overall view for the good market, market is positive. So there is a tendency, there is a chance like it may break out this level, may, it may give a breakout for the resistance level at 39.6 because it has been previously testing like three, four times this, this level but wasn't able to break. So the multiple times the resistance tested, eventually it gets it gets break. So we may expect a breakout at, at this level given the overall positive view of the market and the uh, commodity market as well. But still, we like to have like a uh, control on the like the stop loss because if it goes down, it can fall back like till to thirty six before it resumes its upward journey. That's what I, I see based on this, these technicals. And the volumes are like consistent. There's no spike in this level, but the expected earning coming on 10th of August. So, and the earnings major is like 0.25, not a very good earning, although it is positive, but a stock you are purchasing at a level of like $40 and it gives you an like EPS of 0.25, seems to be like a very, very low EPS, but but uh, having said that, this seems to be positive, unlike others which are like in negative. RSI is an upward trend. 
and it may reach up to level of 70 by the time it hits like 39 rsi will be like in the over uh, overbought region and whenever it enters this overbought region it like it it uh, it will correct it, it went back yeah it will correct itself like we don't have a history of this stock like sustaining a level above 70 like it hit it like the highest level of 85 it came back here also it came back so we can't see any history for the stock like sustaining any levels above 70 so by the time it enters this over so uh, overbought region it will fall back so and we have a resistance coming up at a distance of 1.5 dollar so we may expect that it may it can you know either and go in a consolidation phase at this level or may fall back so it's better to watch this stock how it behaves along this resistance line and given this expected earning is very low and it is nearby and by far what what we have seen like the stocks which are showing their earnings uh, expected earning date is near those stocks are really not performing well like because we are not expecting very good earnings based on the COVID-19 and whatever happened the fall in the um, demand in the market so investors like they don't see any uh, any surprise and a positive surprise or a big confidence level that okay the earnings are like nearby and we can see a spike uh, upward spike in the stock so that's not what we are seeing in the canadian market these days so there are a couple of factors like we can that we have to see before like getting an entry in this in this stock almost like all the gold stock levels very true uh, just yeah. one question the yeah. previous candle which is a red candle yep yeah. I assumingly, if I keep a buy at about 35 uh, something, 35 and 50, uh, 35, 50 or around that, which is the low of that candle, mm -hmm. uh, with a stop of about uh, 34, 50 or 30, uh, 30, uh, 34. And okay. uh, I get out at about 39, 65, 39, 75. Will that be, could that be a possibility? Before the before, since the results are out on tenth uh, of August, so for for, for a duration of what uh, only about eight days. Yep. So uh, I think that's on ninth. Yeah, tenth of August. So tenth is result. So you, if you want to get out, that will be like somewhere around eighth of August. So we are saying like seven, eight. Uh, yeah. Seven eight, eight, eight days. sessions. Yeah, eight sessions. Eight sessions. Yeah. yeah. So because I saying, would expect it to. I would expect it to dip to the previous low. Which was the previous day? Yeah, this one you were saying yeah. this low of thirty six point nine five. Yes, thirty six point nine five. So if I keep it at about thirty five fifty or thirty five seventy five, and keep a stop at thirty five to take it to thirty nine fifty, it can take a day. But but when in the next day, next few days, it uh, I I see that because it, it would be volatile before the results. It should be mm -hmm. volatile. It should, but uh, normally these this stock the range. If you talk about the range, the range is not very high. Like that's true. If it's, that's then true. You see the size of the candle. The size of uh, the candle is not much. The volumes are consistent. So volatility factor is like before the results. Yes, there is a volatility, but it depends upon the stock as well. And if you talk about this particular stock, the size of candle is small. Like opening and closing price, is, you see thirty eight point one eight is the closing, and how much was the opening? Thirty seven. Maybe less than like 50 60 cents okay. and this is also almost the same okay. although there was a there was like a uh, high and low was the difference with opening and closing and no different inconsistent small oh, candles okay. thank you yeah, yeah. Uh, for me like it will be uh, you can enter but uh, we can have like other options as well where you can put your money and you can have a better re better returns I would rather say because Better returns results. on this are limited Better based returns. on the reward ratio. Yeah. Very true. Very true. Okay. Yeah. The next one, guys. Can we take AEM, which might have a similar trend? Right. Yeah. The third one. Uh, sorry, TSX. ESX, very nice. This is at this resistance level. So the fib ratios, guys, are you practicing the fib ratios? We have our format is like a way we are not bombarding very like very really huge information. We introduced few of the indicators like last time, couple of days. 
back, we introduce fib ratio. And then whenever I am analyzing, I'm using this, this fib ratio so that you guys are aware. So I expect that you are practicing this as well so that you get hands-on on this before we get into some other indicator. And then our next sessions will be based on Analyze, analyzing the information based on that indicator. So I'm not using any other indicator so far because we have not yet studied that. So once you are familiar and start having, have practiced this indicator, then we will move on with the introduction of the next indicator in our discussions. Okay, so this one uh, seems to be at its resistance level of 97. Exactly, yeah, um, same. It's, it's at the resistance level and the bottom is like 78. So downside is very, you know, very long. So there is a risk here that it can fall back after hitting this. So I would say like, wait for this stock to give a breakout and one confirmation candle, one day candle is formed above the previous candle, obviously that green one. So, and the, third, and the second day, if stock is moving above the midpoint of the previous candle, uh, we can say that this is uh, in uptrend and has given a breakout and that would be the point that you point that uh, where you can enter in the stock but right now entry uh, yeah it's not feasible but if you're holding the stock and this is the right time to sell it if you're in profits sell it and if it takes a dip buy it again or if it crosses this resistance line and gives you a, a confirmation one day green candle is formed I wait for that candle and on the second trading day if it is still in the uptrend so that will be your entry point and the expected earnings are near 0.23 like if you tell calculate in terms of percentage this is nothing like 0.2 percent 0.35 percent yeah because it is like almost 100 this is 0.23 percent you can say so 0.2 percent 0.25 percent is not you know is not something worth it given at this point of time when it is like hitting its resistance and the downside is like uh, huge. It can go further down to 78 before it's before it takes its, uh, its immediate support level. Volumes are like less at this point. Uh, uh, 29 is the earning. Yeah, Vivek, as you mentioned in the previous stock, that like it should be volatile. Uh, and if you see this 29th of July, 29th of July means like four trading sessions. If I open the calendar here, 29th will be Wednesday. So we have three trading sessions. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. On the third session, there, there is an announcement. So we, ex we were expecting a uh, volatility. We should have theoretically expected a volatility, but look at the uh, sizes of the candles. It was a consolidation phase and a little big candle. Little big means like from 93 to 96, not a very high, like 2.5% increase just one day before uh, the market closes. So Canadian market overall, like uh, to be honest, I haven't seen much volatility in, in that sense. Like if we are expecting these sort of incidents, incidents like uh, results are being announced or something, some good news is coming up and we will see a volatility and sustainable volatility actually, that, that's what matters. So normally I haven't figured out like this is, way, uh, this is sustainable and this is volatile plus um, uh, the market is sustainable. Most of the impact is coming through NDX. So whatever is happening in the US market, in the NASDAQ index, in S&P 500, so we will see almost a replica of that in the Canadian market. So like uh, it's just volatility with sustainability has been like, uh, we would say an issue here. I haven't seen it like much sustainable being in a, in a Canadian market. And this one for, um, for, for this stock, yeah, I would say like sell it here. Uh, if you're holding it, sell it. If you, uh, if you are in profit or even if like in a minor, market, sell it and then buy it again, either at the tip or at another level, uh, which is above its resistance level. Yep. I hope that sufficiently or precisely answers uh, the guys who are interested in this stock. Eagle Mines. Vivek, uh, sorry, uh, Aditya is silent today. Aditya, what happened? Oh, to be honest, uh, <laughs> the stocks which I invested in are doing okay, not so good last week. So, and hearing about the crash, so to be honest, this week I'll just be watching Tyre. 
Yeah, but to be honest, I, I, I'm doing the same for last, um, for last almost like two weeks. Uh, I'm inactive because of the market as well and because of the uh, pressure from the office as well. We yeah. are like in, in the, by the end of the reporting time. We have Everyone reporting has, frameworks and what, deadlines. Yeah, sorry to interview. Another thing what I'm hearing about is like a market crash is going to come because the Fed bill, right, there's going to be 1200 that they're going to insert, but that's not going to come until end of August. So we are expecting another market crash is what I've been hearing. So I hope money is we the best. We have been hearing this, this sort of thing from multiple analysts. Like, and we have been hearing it us for more than a month now. The another <laughs> crash is coming, the bubble is being formed up in the US market. So whenever the situation is like this, don't hold the stocks for too long. Like clear your positions in a day or two max. So, but still you cannot, you know, sit back. If you can ask you. Yes. Taj, if I can ask you, what is the current PE ratio for the markets for Nasdaq and for TSX? Uh, I exactly don't remember, but I can check and get back to you on this. Yeah. I need uh, PE ratio number one, now. or if you can add uh, yeah. an indicator called CCI to this uh, CCI and Williams are that will yes, give you further. Yeah, if, in our next session, we, we will introduce a few more uh, indicators as well. But so far, we haven't, you know, introduced and normally I don't use the buying Achha. bands. Oh, and like we, oh, uh, we, where we use like few indicators, like the basic ones are in during our discussion, RSI, MACD, and uh, and uh, and this uh, FIB ratios and all that. Normally, we are not going to that uh, advanced level because most of the guys who are in our group are like you can say ninety five percent guys are the beginners ones. So we like introduce few things like. We started from the very beginning from support and the resistance level so that everyone is with us. And we can introduce though in the next sessions uh, uh, another ratio, uh, another indicator, maybe like calling a band or some other other ratio, uh, other indicator that will help all of us to get a little bit advanced in the technical side. Very true. Yeah, and we are also planning to have some session for the fundamentals as well because mostly we are dealing in the stocks, looking at the screen and looking at the prices or is the, looking at the views of some of the analysts, but very few of the guys in our group are really looking at the fundamentals or looking at the financials uh, of uh, the companies before getting into the, those stocks. So we are like planning one session for up for the fundamentals as well. That will be nice. That will be nice to look forward to. Yeah, exactly. So, because we have covered a few of the aspects in technicals, we started literally from zero, where like most of the guys didn't knew it. So we gradually built up like some awareness, at least we, I can say, we brought some awareness among the members, like who are just now starting the, the trade, they're entering in the market and they should know, okay, there is something called technicals so or there is something called fundamentals. So I believe like uh, we have created a little bit awareness among the members. And going forward, we will be introducing more uh, like fundamentals and uh, indicators as well. Okay. So, Kudos to you for that. Kudos to you. Yeah. Really great yeah. job. Thank you very much for the appreciation. And uh, we will go for the next talk. Uh, we can take like two, three more talks. I have like taken most of the time today. Like, uh, uh, Kamal is waiting for his session to come up. No, 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 I, like 30 I, to 40 minutes. I, I'm fine. I'm fine. I, I was just trying okay. to uh, interrupt because uh, this uh, session might end. Um, and I would yeah, request it's... everyone to rejoin on the same meeting invite because Zoom has this limitation of uh, 40 minutes call. Yeah, we have 40 minutes. minutes. Uh, so it's so, like a minute remaining. So we will like uh, join back using the same link and then we will pick up a few more stocks before I hand over the session to Kamal for his part. Okay, I'll see you in a minute. Yeah. yeah. So request you all to join on the same. Okay. Yes, guys, tell me the next stock. Which you want to discuss, or I will pick someone from my own. Okay. If no one is asking, then. Yeah, uh, yeah sure. Tell me. On behalf of one of no. our group members. Uh, no. Sorry, is anyone requesting? No, no, go ahead. Yeah. If not, then uh, CGX. Cineplex. CGX. Is there any news in CGX after that happened? 
the contract was like you know breached there that was terminated by australian entity have you heard any news after that cgx is filing uh, for uh, because they uh, cineworld i guess because they turned down the contract so they are filing an agreement so that they can get um, for the breach of agreement yeah they i heard that i read somewhere like they were saying that they since there was no such clause that they can terminate the agreement now since australian entity has terminated the agreement they are filing a lawsuit against the entity for the uh, loss of uh, reputation and damages so that damage claim they were planning to file against the australian entity yeah. after that i didn't heard anything on that okay let's get back to this uh, and this stock is in the long consolidation phase for some time and this happened actually after a news that broke out like in the last month that their contract with australian entity was terminated and after that they couldn't get back to the previous levels so it is still like in the same consolidation fix it and zoom it so you can see it in a very middle back way yeah it's more visible now so this stock is in consolidation phase and uh, whenever the stock is in, in the consolidation phase the idea is we shouldn't be dealing in that stock until it gives a breakout so if the breakout happens on the upper side by the way it can go on the either side either on the upside or on the downside if it gives a breakout on the upper side it can go up to a level of 10.09 which will be like the same level of the previous candle before it actually entered into the consolidation phase or the next thing that can happen uh, it may go down and going down will be at around the level of this much let me make it more precise so this can be the level of 6.62 let's do some back testing 6.62 yeah it has a previous low of 6.18 so 6.2 yeah somewhere around 6.2 to 6.6 so this can, this could be the level of this stock going forward if it gives a breakdown on the lower side but i think that could be the uh, lowest level that it ever touched like this of testing and previously i can't see this stock like till like 4 or 5 years it never came back to these these levels and this is like seems to be something horrible for this stock but on the other side the flip side is that it can be a good buying opportunity in the long run if they Mm, try to sustain and don't go for the bankruptcy thing, but it can. It will take some time, not in the current market. But the day it gives a break out and these things have been sorted out, the economy is back and people are, you know, actually have started going out and dining in and going to this, uh, to cineplex and watch movies. It can, it can go up, and it will make a good high. That, but at the current point. It seems to be risky because we don't know when this is going to happen, and it can go further down to six point six eight. I would recommend like just wait for this stock to give a breakout either on the upside or the low side. If it goes at the lower side, I think that will be a good point to buy because that was the lowest ever point in like last four or five years for this stock to reach at, and currently also it is one at one of the lowest. I think this will be fifty two weeks low right now, but still we don't know how long you have to tie up your. your capital in this stock and uh, but the good idea can be you can start accumulating little bit in this stock because eventually it will go up that's for sure that it will never re- forever remain at these levels but don't block too much capital in this because currently we don't know how how it going to move i think that that should be our stance and rsi downward macd also you know this the gap is being converging now it was like upside now the gap has started converging and me you know give a sell signal very soon that's how i see this stock and earnings 
are negative 1.55 as expected because uh, they have overhead cost operation, operations are like not there no revenues overhead cost is there so it's expected that the earnings will be negative and with uh, all this happening that if you see the stock levels stock levels are constantly down stock levels are constantly down declining stock declining rsi negative earnings are near and if you have a close look at the price declining trend at currently at its support level so if this support level breaks given that there is a declining where is the stock line went given that there is a declining stock volume pressure on the earnings which is negative there is a chance that it can give a breakout or, or on the lower side and make and make new low of uh, somewhere around 6.6 .6. So better to wait for this stock and not, not to enter. That's how I perceive based on the fundamentals. I hope that can give, uh, give out some view to the guys who are planning to invest in CGX. Because previously when it was like at, at this level 13, like here, we were expecting that this, this is the lowest. It might not go further. At this point of time, then it broke out that, okay, yes, the agreement has been canceled and there is the stock is going down. That's how it happened in the last month. Uh, that's fine, Kamal. Yep, thanks. So, uh, there's one more, um, ACB. ACB. Okay. Uh, TSX, second one. We studied ABC, now this is something AB, ACB. Schools need to change the rules from ABC to ACB as well. Okay. We have been discussing this talk previously, I believe. Can you stop? What happened to this talk? This is COVID. Okay, this is in very bad shape these days. And giving you a downtrend this downtrend is very sharp like you see in the shorter view short graph for a few days it's in continuous downtrend and it has actually broken this support level of 13.42 now adding towards the next support level of 13.42 let me draw the fib ratio here i think that will get some more useful information let's remove these all things and uh, fib ratio here from this point this is the lowest one okay, I'll take it Okay. I can zoom to see the numbers. The downside is coming towards somewhere around 12, which will be a 23% retracement. And the upside, uh, we don't see this stock to be in the uptrend anymore. But if it goes upside, upside will be the first support, uh, first resistance level will be 15. So it uh, I assume that it will continue its downward journey towards 12 where it will take its first support because constantly it is for like uh, more than a week, almost two weeks, it is constantly down and moving towards its uh, next support level of 12.3. Volumes are constantly low, earnings like are negative and as soon as like this date of October will approach near and there will be even more pressure on this stock with respect to its price and it will it is going down towards at this level of oversold oversold level if you draw a trend line here see how it can behave so it can fall down till a level of 26 before it takes its upward trend and by the time it will be around somewhere around 12 dollars as well that can be that can be treated as the entry point 
and uh, for for a very short term not for like a month or so so you because earnings are negative it can put a pressure on that so it, if it takes a support at this level you can enter for like few days maybe maximum a week and then you just get out of this stock but currently just wait for this stock to uh, to you know to take its support and try to sustain at that level currently don't enter and if you are holding this stock and you are in losses then wait if you are in profit which is like little unlikely that you will be in profit given that it is falling down sharply so uh, if you are in losses you need to wait for this stock to move its trend from after taking a support from a level of 12 yep next one guys i will take like uh, two more stocks and then i will hand over to kamal i yes uh, would you like to mention yeah uh, i it's a uh, lte from tsx lte for tsx l You're seeing Ajax for a very long time. Where have you been, Ajax? <laughs> yeah, I was, I was around. Okay. You were also around, but oh, in a different direction, maybe. Okay. Yeah, different direction. Okay, fine. Maybe different days because we changed the day of the session. Yeah, we changed the day as well. Sunday is a working day there in in Mina, so maybe that's why. okay what it says here based on this currently at a support level taking support from 78 and it has a small resistance here this is the resistance and it is not able to break out a level of 0.89 and it has given a closing at its exactly at its resistance level was it tested how many times like multiple times here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 almost like nine time it tested this level but it never gave a break out to this level sometimes it gave a closing at the same level and sometimes it made a high but didn't sustain and fell back again so multiple time it has been tested so at this point of time wait for the stock if it is crossing this line or not if it is crossing that can be an a good entry point actually for the next target of 0.89 that can give you around like 10% jump in this stock uh, but if it doesn't crosses this then again it will continue its journey back to this level of 0.66 or ultimately based on the retracement level it 0.64 so it will be somewhere around this range it will take its support as it has been taking previously 0.68 so upside is very less i think nothing is your upside and downside at this price level a zero and downside is like uh, 11 cents so uh, recommended approach is wait for the stock either to come back down again 0.68 where you can take an entry and then uh, you can sell it out when it goes back again to its resistance level or the other way is like wait for the stock to give a breakout and then you enter in this stock uh, and uh, given this technology stock are up these days and uh, market if the market seems behaves well it may break out because uh, it has been tested like several times but still you know it's if if even if it has been tested several times it's not a conclusive answer still you need to wait for the market to give you one confirmation candle uh, and then on the next trading day and after that you, you get plan your trade and uh, if we talk about the volumes volumes are like i think the average volume in this stock is very low it is doesn't seem to be very very liquid stock uh, average volumes are low when the earnings were near what was the earning were the earning was negative when the earnings were near uh, near uh, the stock like uh, was traded a little bit higher here also before the earning got it was traded higher in at this point it wasn't traded higher though but uh if there is no news on nothing the average volumes in this stock are like little low our sai seems to be like uh, turning downwards because of this one red candle that was formed and that was yeah upside price rejection whenever there is upside price rejection let me zoom it for you 
it is an upside price reaction. Whenever there is an upside price reaction, seem there is a selling pressure which stands at this level of 0.81. So there is a selling pressure. The sellers are coming in and they push the market down back to to the lowest levels. So selling has not yet exhausted, which is an indication that it may not cross this level because selling exists at this point. And if you analyze it more closely. Like at this level, previously when it touched this level on this date, if you can see it clearly on 20th of July, it touched this level and fell down drastically for two more days and came back to 0.3. It will be interesting to monitor this stock. If it is going down, this will be good of buying the opportunity for you. But if you are already holding it and, and the next session, it is it, it has continued its downward journey, then sell it and then buy it again at the lowest levels. I think that sufficiently gives the answer for the guys who are dealing in this stock. It has anything else you want to know about this? Tariq sir, can you buy this at 0.73 and dispose it at 0 0.8? 0 0.73 and... Buy yes, at 73 yes, and dispose at 0.8? Yep. Yeah, because I have seen this stock like going <laughs> down up to around 0.7 and then shooting up to 0.8 and it's been like continuous. Yeah, 0.7 and 0 0.8, like these trends for like 5-6 sessions. 0.73, like yeah. this one, and then yeah. selling at, at resistance level of 0 0.79 or 0 0.8. Yeah, you yeah. Can, that can and be that means you, keep, you buy at 73 and keep a stop of 70. So you keep a ratio uh, one is to three. Stock of seventy here, it can touch this seventy, but uh, you know it can bounce back from seventy. I would recommend stop loss here below its support level of point six, if you can you have that much of strength because 66. it can touch this level. Point six six. Yeah, point six is depending upon your risk capacity. Yes. For me, I would put it here because the, it's just if you put it the stop loss here at point seven zero. Uh, it can take a support from this level and rebound because if you sold at 0 0.70 and the next day it starts rising up. It, it may happen because the support is very near 2.7. So I would say the stop loss would be around 0.66. If it touches this level, then you exit the trade. But currently, you have like two options, 0.73 to 0.8. Or, but for that to happen, you need to wait for this stock to uh, fall back again to this level. Enter the stock Absolutely. and sell it and trade between these uh, this channel of uh, resistance and support. Very true. Yeah. It just you were saying something. Sorry, I was uh, saying the same thing. Oh, this yeah. is actually a passive uh, 5G stock. The laying uh, they are into laying uh, of uh, fiber optic cable. So, do you think that uh, it has? Uh, some like will it gain some steam once the 5G stock starts gaining? Currently, we don't see any information being uh, translated into the stock price because there's no you know the volumes are like good indicators. We don't see any spike, any high or low in the volumes. Currently, they it might be like too early to say anything about that because currently the market has not yet responded anything to this piece of information. It, it may or may not, it will, it will be risky because if the volumes are responding to this information, then we can say, yeah, there is something happening in that, but nothing is happening. No, neither the small guys nor the big players are, big players seem to be interested in this talk at this moment. Yeah, makes sense, Maya. thank you. Okay, we'll take the last talk and then I will hand over to Kamal for his session. I would say like uh, the guys who have not yet participated in anything or they have not yet contributed or they wanted to ask this last talk should go to them or like and then and Kamal will say. We have, I think a new member, Sisan Chala. I think Tahir, I'll go with one. <laughs> This is Asit, yeah. Oh, can you look at N O V N? N O V N. It's a US. N O V N. N O V N. Yes. The first one, yeah. Okay, guys. What happened here? Oh, don't. The lucky guys. 
<laughs> it's like see it's interesting like from 3.0 like to 0 0.8 like, i don't know in just one day and the volumes were you see the volumes the volumes disappeared actually at this point see and there was no volumes here and then no volumes here and nothing if you go back and see the volumes nothing that's one of the reasons like guys don't trade in the stocks which don't have the volumes is the illiquid stocks and now we don't know when this stock will get back to this level of point uh, of 2.9 so candle size is also like not good and small candle sizes volumes are like next to zero i hear the volumes you know small volumes came in but previously there were no volumes we have an earning coming in of negative okay uh, for this stock uh, yeah, this is in a long consolidation phase still we can let's say that it is a consolidation parallel channel it gave a breakout in the last two three trading sessions but whether this breakout is sustainable or not this is a question Till this one, you know, okay, this one on 21st of July, it was a breakout. Then next day, it didn't sustain. It gave you a negative closing. Third day, also negative. And the fourth day, it is back to the same channel again. So we can't say that that, that was a positive breakout. That, that was a false breakout for this stock. And still, it is in the same channel. So, so the idea is like, stay away from the stock. Unless you clearly see that trend has been changed from sideways to upward if this trend has changed that can be that can be a point if you're already holding this stock uh, then wait for the stock to you know give you another spike like at this point it gave a breakout fell back to its support level here it rose a little bit fell back and at this point on 15th of june it gave you a spike of 0 0.719 point eight, around 0.8 and then slept actually fell back again and slept for months the same thing happened here it gave you a spike and then started going down so for the last four days it is it is in downward direction volumes are also down the guys who bought it here i believe the next day they came out so one thing you should keep in mind like these sort of stock if they give you a breakout or sudden spike in just one day this is like sort of pumping and next day obviously it will be dumping of that stock unless and until there is some very good positive news that is going to change the fundamentals of that stock sometimes the stocks like behave based on some tweets or some sort of information some guys they would like to play on on the, on the news so there is some tweet from some official guys and then stock move up so that is more likely to be pumping and then you will see a dumping if you uh, you recall like je was being discussing our group je one day it went very high and the next day back to the same level again so this is called something pumping and dumping of the stock then the guy if you are like lucky to get into that stock on the same day don't wait, don't hold it for like next two three days either sell it by the end of the same day for the next day morning session just get out of that stock or unless that stock or that information that came to you uh, is going to change the fundamentals of that company if that's not the fact then you know this news is like just a one day fresh news or max two days get out of it if you don't want to lose your capital that's what i would recommend for you guys for stocks that moves like this and fd is i i, I see fd is something similar to that don't do hold FD for very long. Although it currently this is uh, at very low levels, it made a high of like 22 or like 20, 24 even previously, and recently it made a high of 22, and now back again to 13.5. Gave a closing of around 15. So these sort of stocks, like they should be short lived, not not very long. But currently, it, since FD is at the lowest levels, you can start accumulating, but don't keep it for very long that's what i would say okay guys thank, uh, thank you thank uh, yeah welcome so if there's anything else to be asked i will hand over this session to kamal for uh, his part so he will continue with you guys uh, thank you very much everyone thank you for your participation and now over to kamal yes kamal 
Thank yeah. you, Diane. I will stop sharing. You're most welcome. Yeah. I will stop sharing the screen here. Yeah, thank you, Diane.